and toasters. MP3s and TV screens, even roller coasters. Without them, clocks stop ticking. Without them, lights go out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The Piggy Bank. Mwah. Tom Thomas, why are you throwing away your money? That's not what I'm doing. I'm storing it. This is a piggy bank. Oh, here's another coin. I don't like its snout. That's one very suspicious looking pig. Are you positive your money's safe with her? Don't worry. Whatever I put into my bank here is not getting back out. This piggy bank won't give up a cent. You greedy piggy! Come on, Nolik. Simka must have taught you about how banks work. Humans came up with the idea of piggy banks because they wanted a good place to save their coins. For storing lots of money, people use a safe, a large metal box with a very strong lock. Now that kind of piggy bank's almost impossible to break open. The biggest safes are in banks. Banks use them to store their customers' money and other valuables. There are even safes in banks that are whole rooms. You'd need an awful lot of change to fill up one of these piggy banks. So why are you saving up all this money? For roller skates. How much more do you need to save? I don't know. I can't see if there's enough in there. Then just go and open it. But there's no way to do that. The only way is to smash it real hard. So smash it. Nyeh, -uh, forget it. I have nothing to put my money into. But what if there's already enough for roller skates? And what if there's not? All right, then I guess I'll count your money for you. Tidish! Oh, whoa! Tom Thomas, you've got a fortune in here! There are many different kinds of money, and they're not just coins, either. Long ago, people paid each other with shells and squirrel skins and even parrot feathers. And, of course, metal coins are more convenient than any of those things. And paper money is even more convenient than coins. One piece of paper can be worth as much as a hundred coins or even a thousand. All that needs to be done is to print more zeros on it and that's all. Today, humans can pay for almost anything without paper money or coins whatsoever. If you have enough money in the bank, you can just walk into a store, give the cashier your bank card, and take your purchase home with you without handing over any money. The bank knows how much money you spend, and they pay the store for you later. It's so convenient. So, will you count them? Here we go. One coin! And two coins! Wait, Nolik, what one coin, two coins? What are you counting? You have to add together all of the different numbers. Huh. You should have told me that before. Uh, I never learned how to. Yeah, that's what I figured. Come on out. What can I do? What if you try stacking the coins so they're like stairs? That's what I'm already doing, folks. Why don't you try tilting the piggy bank over? Hang on. Stop! I'm getting buried! Put it back the way it was before! This is worse! Ah! Just put the pig down! No, like, hang in there, please. I'll get some thread and lower it down to you. Ah! I can't get a hold of it. It's too far away. Hey, Tom Thomas, smash the piggy bank! What? Just smash your piggy bank. But I like it. And what, you don't like me? Of course I like you. Well, who do you like more? You're my friend, aren't you? Of course. Then smash the piggy bank, will you? Okay, Nolik, I'm gonna do it. Nolan, are you?
Are you okay? I'm okay. <sighs> Thank you, Tom Thomas. Thank you, my friend. No problem. At least now you can count up how much money you have. Nah, there's no reason to do it. There's no way it's enough for roller skates. You sure? What a shame. But now you've got all of this money here to buy a piggy bank that's totally brand new. The motion sensor. <laughs> this part has to be replaced with one that's new. I've got an idea. How about we run to the warehouse and get it? Because you don't have time to go there. And that way you can keep on working. All right then. Only remember the code for the part. A 8375. I'll remember it for sure. <laughs> Why is Elisa always there at the wrong time? Do we have to wait till she goes away? <laughs> what for? We'll sneak out behind her. Did it? Did you find the part? It's here. Are we ready? Yeah, yeah we're, we're ready. ready. Let's do it. Ah, Professor Eugenius, you're in here. Uh, do you know why this door just opened? Ah, and closed by itself? Ah, of course I know, Elisa. It's because I converted it into an automatic one. You see, I installed a motion sensor above it. A motion sensor is like an electronic eye that watches everything that moves in front of it. Did you ever wonder how doors open by themselves at places like stores or at the airport? They open with the help of motion sensors. If the sensor sees that someone walks up to the door, it sends a signal to the door's electric motor. The electric motor opens the door and then automatically closes it after the person walks through it. That man is just astounding. Only a bit untidy. The door is automatic now? Then why didn't it open for us on the way here? Because we're too little for that motion sensor. But the part's bigger than we are. Big enough for the sensor to see it. Then how do we get in there? We can fool that thing if we stay close by the wall. Now let's keep this as close to the wall as we can. This door is a little too automatic. And these parts are here again. Didn't I put them away? Ah, the sensor still noticed us. Here's what we gotta do. Let's break it. Why do we gotta break it? All we have to do is deactivate the unit. Sensors are used to help people in all sorts of different situations. For instance, motion sensors notice when someone is moving so they can automatically open a door or turn on a light. Some automobiles are equipped with rain sensors. If it starts raining or snowing, the sensor automatically turns on the car's windshield wipers. There are also sensors that react to how much light there is. In the evening, when it gets dark, light sensors can be used to turn on street lamps. And in the morning, when it gets light again, the sensor switches them off. A smoke detector can sense when there's smoke inside. The sensor can be used to turn on a fire alarm or even an automatic fire extinguishing system. I turned it off. That should do the trick. Great job. Let's go. <laughs> Professor Eugenius, mission accomplished! Well done, Fixies. Uh, actually, not that well. This part here is A7583. Uh-huh. And I asked for A8375. Digit, didn't you say you knew the code number? I did know it, but somehow forgot it. Ugh, Digit, I can't believe that you forgot it. 
All right. We'll just have to go out one more time. Thanks, but no thanks. I'll get it this time. I forgot to warn the professor that we've turned off the sensor. And I'm afraid he's expecting that the door will automatically open up. Professor! Stop! You don't! Forgive us, we didn't mean it. The laboratory. What did he say? That we've got to get to the school. How come? Did you hear why? I didn't. Did you? I wonder if Simka didn't go to school today. Or if Nolik got into some kind of mischief. Oh, I'm worried this is something serious. La 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 la. And that's five, six. Hmm, I like this hairstyle. Seven. Verda, oh, where's Grampus? I'm not positive, but go and look in the chemistry area over there. Over in chemistry? Uh, tell us, was Nolik doing anything wrong today? Nolik? He's always fooling around. Right. So we're not here for anything Nolik did. Maybe something awful happened to him. Like what? Well, how about anything? This isn't just a school for fixies. This is a laboratory. <laughs> The laboratory where Professor Eugenius works is always humming. In the mechanical zone, Professor Eugenius tests all sorts of different devices to see how well they are made. In the chemistry zone, he conducts experiments on the quality and safety of food. In the electrical zone, he repairs electrical devices and checks their safety. Unfortunately, the professor can be absent-minded, and that can cause things in his laboratory to bubble, spark, or even explode. Masya, there's nothing to worry about yet. But how can I not worry? Digit, have you seen Nolik anywhere? Do you know if anything's happened to him? This is a laboratory here. Who knows what could happen to anyone? Like what? What are you saying? Like that. I told you, things happen here. And where? Let's go, uh... quickly! Masya, no need to panic. Tula, oh. where is so glad you're here? We really need your help. What is going on? Ah, oh, there! Oh, we! Grampus! What? Where? In the mechanical zone, there! And Simka and Nolik? There! They're all there! Oh, my children! Don't lose your head! Oh! Oh! Asya is my wife and the mother of our children, Simka and Nolik. Masya is a real beauty, a kind and gentle soul, and a wonderful homemaker. She is also a very responsible and extremely skilled fixie. She is our family's expert in kitchen appliances and gadgets. Masya works from morning till night, fixing and cleaning anything that is in need of her expert care, because she just loves when everything is clean and tidy. But most important for Masya are her children. She takes loving care of Simka and Nolik and tries to protect them from harm. Masya worries about them so much that sometimes her imagination gets carried away with what might have happened to them. Although our little Nolik can get himself into situations that even Masya could never have dreamed of. So it's Simka we need to save. 
Not you? I don't need saving either. I'm fine. And what are you so worried about? Everyone's alive. Then why did you make us come here? I need you to help with a little accident we had. Noli, was this your fault? Oh, no, it's not Nolik's fault. Quite the opposite. He was trying to help me fix it. Papus, we need you to help us with one of the pieces that we couldn't get back in place. This one? <gasps> huh? Uh. Oh, a perfect repair. Huh, that was really the only reason we had to rush here? Why not? There was just no way we could let this wait, so I sent for you. But Fire said... Why Fire? Why is it always fire? How come you had to scare us so badly? I'm not the one who scared you. You did that all by yourselves. Candy. Nice black eye. Tom Thomas, did you fall? How did you hurt your eye? I had a big fight with Johnny. Oh, wow! How could you? What was the fight about? We argued over who's cooler, a racer or a boxer. A race driver's cooler. Of course, that's what I said to him. But Johnny had to prove Vince a boxer. Well? He proved it all right. Can't you see? You don't prove anything at all by fighting. What a profession, a boxer. Yeah, now your dad, he's got an amazing profession, a journalist. He gets to travel to different countries and brings back all sorts of funny stuff. They even show them on TV. No. What do you mean? Boxers are cooler. Everyone's really afraid of them. Don't be gloomy, Tom Thomas. Have a candy. I've got a good idea. How about a taste tester? That's the best job. And what is he testing? A taste tester is someone who tests the tastes of drinks and food. Yeah, how come? They want to find out if the food is delicious and what all the flavors are in it. Super! What a great profession! But a taste tester is not a job just anyone can do. I can do it. Then let's check. So open your mouth and then close your eyes. what the flavor is inside of this piece of candy. Mmm, strawberry. That's right. Good job, Tom Thomas. And this? That tastes like orange. You missed that one. It was lime. Yeah, Tom Thomas. If you want to be a food taster, you're going to need to do some serious practicing. Let's do it. Raspberry? You got it! Simka, how do they get the candy to be hard on the outside and filled with liquid on the inside? Don't get distracted, you're training! Yeah! Hard candy is made like this. First, a sweet syrup is cooked until it is thick and stretchy. Then the mixture is pulled into long, hollow tubes that are like noodles. As the tubes cool down, they start getting harder. And it's right then that the tubes are filled with the soft, fruity center and then cut into pieces. It all has to be done quickly before the tubes have a chance to get totally hard. And that's how candy is made that is hard on the outside and soft on the inside. It could be strawberry, only I just can't tell anymore. Ouch! What's wrong? My tooth. Was I hearing things? Or did someone yell? Mm. Oh, I got it. Come on, let's take a look at your tooth. A taste tester has to be the most delicious profession in the world. They taste all sorts of things like cheeses and chocolates and decide which ones taste better. Everything is tested for taste, even water, because different waters taste differently. There are also testers who don't test food and drinks, but rather they test the smells of things like deodorants or perfumes. Not everybody can become a really great tester. 
First, you have to be able to tell apart all the different tastes and smells. You also need to know when it's time to stop, or you can make yourself sick and lose your ability to tell things apart. That's the reason why taste testers only take very small bites of food and very, very little sips. If you're gonna have a bad tooth, it's good to have a mom who's a dentist. That's true. She's a good dentist. She'll fix it in no time. She'll pull that tooth right out. So, did she pull it out? Nah, she just gave me some medicine to gargle. Your tooth, does it hurt? Yeah, it hurts a little. Hey, now I definitely know who's cooler than a boxer. Who? Who else? A dentist. Even boxers are afraid of going to the dentist. The alarm. Hey there, I'm back. Yoo-hoo! Wait, my chocolate bunny! It was standing right here! What's this, a dog? Not that one, another one! I had two bunnies. I just got them as a present. You had two bunnies? Are you sure of that? Of course! You think I don't know my ones from my twos? Huh. Then someone stole one. Unless, uh, unless... <gasps> you went and ate it yourself! Me? How come I don't remember anything about it? Maybe you're a sleepwalker. What is a sleepwalker? Someone who gets up from his bed at night without waking up. He crosses the room, eats one of his chocolate bunnies, and doesn't remember a thing in the morning. But in the morning, the bunny was still there. Yeah? Huh. How about... Your mother. Could she have taken it? She doesn't like when you're eating too much candy. No, she doesn't. She says that candy's terrible for my teeth. And so, to save your teeth from these sweets, she snuck quietly into your room, snatched one of the rabbits, and ate it. But Mom's the one who gave them to me as a present. And so why would she take it? Yeah? Then I just don't know. Well, I do. I think it was your father. He wouldn't steal it. We know he's allergic to chocolate. <laughs> Next he'll tell us how the fish took it. You know, I always thought there was something fishy about those fish. No doubt about it. They stole the bunny. <laughs> uh-huh. And then they hid it in their aquarium. <laughs> oh, no, like that's funny. You know what, Tom Thomas? You need to protect that other chocolate hair. Exactly. It has to be eaten right away. Now, before it disappears. Just wait a little. You don't have to eat it. Let's think of something else. Of course. We need a security alarm. Need what? The alarm was invented to keep houses, cars, and other valuable things safe and secure. The simplest alarm is a siren or light bulb that is connected by wires to a door or window. When someone tries to open a door that has an alarm on it, the alarm goes off, making the siren howl and the light flash. Alarms can also be set up to call the police if they go off. Super! But where can we get ourselves a security alarm? You have an electronic construction kit, remember? You're right. Then bring it over here. Nolik, help me! is the Fixie's victory call. When a job is well done and we Fixies are proud of our work, we exclaim, Tadish! And raise up our hand with our thumb and first two fingers sticking out. You want to know what it means? It's very simple. Fixies love solving problems and fixing things that are broken. And do you know what you need to do to solve a problem? 
First, you need to find out what's broken. Second, understand why it broke. And third, repair what's broken so it works again. So do what the fixies do and first, find it. Second, understand it. And third, fix it. Tadish! <laughs> it really is a great word. And it sounds funny. But we fixies surely like it a lot. Well, Tom Thomas, turn on the alarm. You sure the alarm will work? I'm sure, without a doubt. You're under arrest. Freeze! Chusaka? Why are you stealing my chocolate? The robot. Did I already tell you what I'm hoping you'll get me for my birthday present? <laughs> yes, honey. Only a thousand times or so. A Robotazoid R300 would just be the greatest. With Mega Vision, I want it. I really do. <sighs> I do. Well, tomorrow you'll find out. But now it's time to sleep, Tom Thomas. Wow, that is one great present. And we got Tom Thomas absolutely zero for his birthday. Ah, uh, we're just terrible friends. So, how does this robot work? Okay, so let's give this a try, shall we? First, we'll take a walk. And how does he have any idea where the robot's going? I can tell you. One of the robot's eyes is a video camera. The robot sends the picture to the screen on the controller so the player can see where the robot is going. Yeah! And that's just one thing they know how to do. A robot is a smart machine that can do very difficult or dangerous work for humans. With its strong metal arms, a robot can move heavy objects or put together parts to build cars and other machines. Robots are often sent into outer space or to the bottom of the ocean to help scientists. There are also robots that can understand what people are saying. And robots that can talk and even make jokes, just like people. I've got it. Now let's turn you around. Ah! Uh, what was that? Uh, look. You know... <gasps> he destroyed him! No, let stop! You were playing with that, right? You think Tom will notice? Ugh. Oh, I know what you're doing all night. I'm off to bed. I'll get him to work. I'll stay up until I do. Simka, let's try and... No, we're gonna need some help. Things right. 
Robotazoid R300, I can't believe it! <sighs> well, happy birthday to you, Tom Thomas. I'm sorry, Tom Thomas. Last night, your robot, you know, I broke it. Dad, it works perfectly! Don't you see? I'm so proud of you. You fixed it. Shh! <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't fix it at all. I tried everything. Oh, you want to tell me that the robot fixed itself? <laughs> what a joker. <laughs> Mom, Dad, thanks so much. I love it. And how about thanking us? I should have known it was you who fixed the robot. Happy birthday! The Magnet. Well, it looks like we need a pack of that. Hmm, where did this screw come from? Another look in the kitchen. But we already looked in there. We'll look better this time. Let's go take a look in there. We looked so many times already. Simkanolik, what do you keep searching for in here? It's not a what, it's a who. Our papoos is missing. We've been looking for him everywhere. Oh, no. He's probably already turned into a screw. Because huh? he doesn't have enough energy. Maybe I could help. Surely. Let's start with you picking us up. We're just exhausted from running. In a dangerous situation, a fixie can choose to turn into a screw. But sometimes it happens all by itself. For example, when a fixie doesn't have enough energy. When this happens, the fixie grows weak, gets sluggish, and then goes into hibernation, turning into a screw. This bad luck happens when a fixie doesn't get charged up from being inside of a device. That's why fixies always work inside of machines, so they can stay charged up with energy. Sometimes a fixie that has grown weak and turned into a screw can get lucky. If a human happens to find him and screws him into an appliance, then the fixie will be able to get energized and come back to life. Then he'll unscrew himself and run away, leaving the human wondering, where did that screw go? I know I screwed it in. So, where should we look first? What are you looking for in here, Tom Thomas? Well, um... And what do you have there in your hand? Well, uh, just some screws of mine. Ah, I just found a screw not too long ago. Maybe it's one of yours. Probably. Where's it now? Here, take it, and don't leave them lying around. Should I turn myself around now so your papoose can turn back into himself? He's been lying in there for a week already. He doesn't have the energy to turn back into himself. Then what's next? We have to screw him into some device, you know, so he will get his energy back. Okay. But which one's Papoose? All of these screws in here look like Papoose. We'll 
I'll use a magnet. How come? All the screws will just get lifted up together. First of all, not every... Not every kind of metal is attracted by a magnet. It's an easy thing to see for yourself. Just get a magnet. You probably have one in your house on the refrigerator. Try moving it close to different metal objects you have around the house, like a spoon or nails or coins. You'll notice that some of the metal objects are pulled very strongly by the magnet, while some of the metals are pulled a bit less. And then there will be some metal things that aren't attracted to the magnet at all. Got it. And the second thing? Well, the second thing, we fixes aren't attracted to that magnet one bit when we turn into screws. Let's give it a try. Here, I found him. And now we'll screw him in. I wonder, are there any other fixies in here? We're not enough for you or something? Not at all, I just wonder. Nothing. Oh, and the screw went away. How about that? He already got charged up and unscrewed himself. Why don't you take a little rest after such a big adventure? No thanks, I've had plenty of rest. Anyway, it's something I've wanted to do for a very long time already. The Short Circuit. Are you sure we're allowed to play in your dad's office? We're not gonna play in here. We came here on a tour. I think this place is like a real museum. Just take a look at that. I have no idea what it is. And this thing is a complete mystery. <laughs> Keep it down, this is a museum, you know? <laughs> what a great museum guide you are. You know absolutely nothing. How can you say you don't know? I know. I'd like to run a test here, on the capacitor. On this one? Don't, don't touch. touch. Why can't I? It's not a museum. Because it's dangerous. If you touch it, the shock could be deadly. But you two are touching it all the time. I've seen it. The only time is when the device is turned off. And right now, the device is running. For many centuries, the Fixies only had to work on mechanical devices. But after the discovery of electricity, the Fixies had to master electrical devices as well. At first, Fixies were getting terrible shocks, and they really, really hurt. Over time, the Fixies figured out that you can't fix appliances when they are turned on, and bare wires should never, ever be touched. And Fixies also learned that electricity can travel not just through wires, but through plain old water. So that's why if a broken wire ever ends up in a puddle of water, you must never get close to it, or you could get a terrible shock. Fixies learn all these important rules, and they hope humans understand that they need to learn them as well. Look, now here's one I know about. It's an old radio my dad got for my grandpa. More than 60 years old, can you believe it? <gasps> Your grandpa? <laughs> the old radio. That was a joke. Is it still working? I don't know. Let's check. Got turned off. Maybe it was a short circuit. I'll go find out. <sighs> oh, so it was you who caused the short circuit. I was in here showing all these things to Nolik, and we wanted to turn on on the radio. We flipped the switch on, and then suddenly, kaboom, the lights go off. They're off <sighs> everywhere in the apartment. So then how can I even warm up my pizza now? Soon it will warm up all by itself, now that the refrigerator isn't working. Simka, uh, what is that thing you said? A short circuit. Electricity goes back and forth from an appliance with two separate wires. For example, an iron uses the electricity it needs to get hot. But if those two wires start touching each other without the iron in the middle, then the wires will get hot instead. And this can cause the wires to burn out. 
When this happens, it's called a short circuit. Short circuits can happen when the coating around a wire is worn out or when an appliance is broken on the inside of it. So when you tried turning on that old broken radio, the wires in the apartment started burning. Does that mean all the wires got destroyed? Don't worry. In our apartment, there's an automatic switch to stop that. It turns off the electricity when the wires start getting too hot. Oof. And what about that, uh, uh, automatic switch? Is that something you need your mom and dad to turn on? No question. You definitely would. But you have us. Yeah! And we have Papus and Masia. I'll go tell them what happened here. And you guys, you turn off the radio. But we'll get electrocuted. What do you mean, electrocuted? Thanks to you, there's no electricity. Are you ready? Pull it up. Hooray! Tadish! So, Tom Thomas, what are we doing next? Hmm, why don't we continue with our tour? Hey, wait for me! I'm coming! Hey, wait! I thought you were fixing the television with Papus and Masia. They asked me to come here and stay with you on your awesome museum tour. That way, there'll be less for them to fix in here later. The balloon. No way! You'll miss for sure. No problem. Huh. Anybody can do that. But I bet you can't do it if you tried bouncing the ball off the floor first. Just look. Oh, what are my parents going to do to me? Maybe we should call Simka. Simka! And what's Simka going to do to us when she sees this? So, got yourself in trouble, huh? You shouldn't be playing with a ball inside. And now we have your lamp to fix. But how? Only my dad can reach all the way up there. Why just your dad? You have a hot air balloon over there. That doesn't fly. It's just a toy, see? Well, it might be just a toy to you. But for us fixies, it's absolutely real. If an object is lighter than water, it floats up to the surface. And in the same way, if something is lighter than air, it floats upward. Did you know that hot air is lighter than cold air? Well, it is. And that means if you warm up the air in a balloon, it will float up. Hot air balloons use special gas burners to heat up the air inside of them so they will get lighter. And the bigger the balloon, the more people it can take up into the air. I know what you're saying, but where do we get a burner? You think fixies don't have their own burners? Huh. Sure we've got them. Bring it down here, and I'll go talk to our parents. No, no, and no. The human child must never see us. Listen now, Simka. We already don't approve of him seeing you and Nolik. He won't look. Papas, please. You're the one who told us how you dreamed of flying since you trained to go into space. Yeah. For two years I waited on standby, but I never went up. And you've never flown in a hot air balloon either, honey. So let's call it a deal. I talked them into it. There's just one condition. You can't watch. Okay. You can come in now. Now prepare the burner. Coming right up. <gasps> Permission for takeoff? Permission is granted. And off we go! Hooray! It's flying! Don't you peek! Turn around! Oh, it was an accident. I'm going to evaluate the damage. Maintaining proper altitude. So, they've reached the spot. Air balloons are really awesome. I wonder, who figured out how to do that? It 
was the Montgolfiers. The hot air balloon was invented in the 18th century by the Montgolfier brothers from France. In those days, there were no gas burners, so they heated the air inside the balloon by burning straw. At first, there were no passengers on their balloon. Not counting the fixies, of course. I mean, how else could a balloon get up in the air without them? Unfortunately, the names of the first fixies who took that flight were not recorded in the annals of history. Following the fixies' flight, the next passengers were animals. A ram, a rooster, and a duck. And it was not until those three safely landed after flying a full four kilometers that humans dared to fly in hot air balloons themselves. Ever since their invention, hot air balloons have also gone by another name, Montgolfiers. Hooray! Tadish! Tadish! All right. Simka, please let your parents know that I'm so very thankful. Okay. By the way, now you can turn around. You know, Simka, let's fly the balloon just like them. There's no way, Nolik, we would need to use the burner, and kids aren't allowed to play with fire. I'll give you a ride. Look, I still need to put it back up on the shelf, so climb in and let's do it. <laughs> 